thank you everybody for coming to listen again to uh, this podcast. I am really delighted today to have uh, Taurus Batiste. He wrote a really cool book called Don't Let It Smoke You. Um, and I'm just going to read a little from his Amazon profile. Uh, I will uh, link to uh, the book, uh, which I was able to listen to on Audible. It's very good. I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, after Taurus's uh, football career with the Atlanta Fal Falcons ended abruptly, he switched directions and returned to Georgia State University. Mm -hmm. Uh, to further his education while getting his MBA, he became interested in understanding his own dependency. And he did a lot of traveling, researching, um, and becoming the clever chief. He joined the conversation about the future of cannabis. Uh, this former athlete who's with us here today cautions people, smoke it, but don't let it smoke you. And in this book uh, that we're going to talk about today, he shares his story about how smoking affected his life and the steps he used to accomplish balance. Um, and just to clarify, uh, Taurus still does smoke to this day. I'm gonna just read a little further. Uh, Taurus had a complicated relationship with weed starting in middle school. As a child, he developed a smoking habit um, and uh, saw how, firsthand how damaged it, it was to his lack of self-control. And uh, former, as a former athlete, um, I think you have a lot to offer both adults and kids today, Taurus. So thanks so much. Um, I'm Dr. Jake Felice. Uh, you can contact me through my Cannabis Matrix podcast or through Sweetwater Holistic, which is my consulting, uh, cannabis consulting business. And I was just really excited. We connected on LinkedIn, had a little conversation, and just tell us a little bit more. I know I just read a bit, but uh, what, what made you want to write this book? Yeah, yeah. And Jake, thank you for having me on, and thank you for that little background, that little bio. And pretty much what, what made me write this book is, um, you know, hearing you talk about the bio, and now where I'm at today, I should have said, use cannabis don't let it use you instead of smoke cannabis because you can it's healthier ways now right like i don't smoke now i use it in more healthier ways but i guess um to go to your question what made me write the book was finding my own balance and what was going on in my life and what was going on in the world and trying to navigate through that so for sure and you had an interesting story in the book about where the kind of the world or the universe gave you some feedback and it was that time that you were up in indiana and it was really cold Yep. Just tell us, share a little bit more about that. I thought that was a real fun uh, part of the book. Yeah, for sure. So I was in Indiana and uh, it was really cold in Indiana. I'm being from a Georgia boy, I didn't get that cold in Indiana. Um, and I started to realize that uh, I kind of went through an everyday uh, habit of using, right, smoking at the time. And, uh, and it, this one particular day, I didn't have my, my car ride at the time and I didn't have my normally, Uber wasn't out then, right? Um, so I had to, uh, or I didn't want to, but I kind of seen myself um, really do a big move that was kind of against uh, what I would normally do. So I walked a few miles to go get just a little bag of weed <laughs> and bring it back. And uh, it was kind of embarrassing. And I kind of knew that it kind of had a hold on to me. It was a need and it, you know, it was a struggle for me. And the guy that you bought it from, he gave you some look like, what is, where's your car? What the, you walked here yeah. through this cold Indiana, Absolutely. probably windy day. And I think all you had on was your Letterman's jacket. Uh, Indiana State so. Letterman's jacket. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I remember him saying right before I left, he said, hey, make sure you're not letting this smoke you. And I, I that stuck with me the whole walk back. And, and that's where the book came from. I really like that. Um, a lot of people struggle with cannabis and a lot of people use cannabis uh, might not even be aware uh, that it might be actually have some harmful effects for them. Sure. You have managed to go from having it hold over you to uh, where you have a, a sense of control over it in your life. And, and that's a unique story. I want to hear more about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, it took a while to get through that, right? It took a while to get through that. Um, I tried to quit cold turkey. It just wasn't for me. Um, and then I tried to kind of cut back as well. Um, and I kind of found like a little, a little superpower, I like to say, Jake, within cutting back, where you can kind of, you can cut back and still get better, 
Like, for example, um, and I'll just give you this small example. You know, when people say you need to change and make a 180 degree, it's like, it's like in my household, if you change it from 69 to 72, you're going to feel the difference. So when it comes to smoking and don't let it, it's like, I can just change one angle. I can just, just quit smoking. If I smoke four times a day, maybe I just do it three and I am getting better. And that's where I kind of found that initial where I'm at and kind of how I want to handle things. That's great. That's great. Okay. And, um, I really get a sense that you have a message for young people. I'm, I'm just an old guy, a uh, former athlete. Um, what is it that you want? The, the, what is it? I don't want to call them kids. What is it want that you want the young people to really understand about cannabis? Because many of them, the world that I grew up in, long, long time before the legalization of cannabis. Uh, and many of the kids these days have grown up uh, much of their lives. There's been at least some type of a medical uh, situation around. So it's a much more of a normalized thing. What, what do you feel it, that's uh, important for as far as that goes, Taurus? Yeah, for, for the adult, for the young adults, I think it's big that you educate yourself all the time around everything, even if you hear experts say it, check your facts, check their facts, and just educate yourself for sure. And and as an athlete, uh, um, I don't I don't I don't want. I was surprised the way you talked about how uh, so many of the college football athletes were using cannabis, and mm -hmm. I did play uh, some Division One, not football, uh, but at Penn State. And we had a couple All-Americans on the team, uh, um, and many of the, the users, including at least one All-American, I don't want to call them all out, <laughs> yeah, no names. Uh, were, regular, were regular cannabis users. So um, do you see it as having performance-enhancing aspects for athletes, or uh, what are your thoughts on cannabis as, a, as, a, as an athlete? Yeah, and that's a great question, a great question. So I, I, I'll put two tiers to it. So one tier, now that it's more healthier ways to utilize it, I do see it being an asset to the athletes if they know how to use it and systemize it, et cetera, right, for their benefit. And then on the other end, from what we know right now, I don't see it having any type of um, backlash like opioids. So maybe that's the route to go. I know I, I, I realized last week I was reading, and I see in Israel, um, this is random, Jake, but it's going to make sense. In Israel when the police pull up or the hospital, when they drive to a incident, they have to give the, the oral, sentiment oral, and it kind of relaxes them all. So if the athletes take that same approach, maybe you don't have to smoke it, right? Just a little oral dab or whatever. I think it'll be beneficial and it'll help them for sure. Uh, just allow me to follow up on that. I don't, I'm not sure about the particular Israeli study, but one of the Israeli studies where they used cannabis alongside um, or in ambulances had to deal with uh, post-traumatic uh, issues, whether that be a car accident, sexual assault, acts of war. When the ambulances would come upon the scene, uh, the paramedics would do their assessment and they would administer cannabinoids um, very early on in the trauma-based process and what the one of the results, and, and we know there's lots of good human studies now on cannabis helping with PTSD. Sure. Um, so we know that it helps. And, and one of the things that, it, that the cannabis and the cannabinoids help with in uh, trauma-based PTSD is uh, that part of the problem with PTSD is we get these traumatic memories and we can't get them out of our brain and they affect us in our sleep and, and, it, and it becomes very difficult for us to forget the traumatic memory and the cannabinoids appeal or appear to be helping modify the memory aspects, almost like forgetting the trauma. I had a, there was a young uh, buddy of mine. He was a football player. I, I played lacrosse. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but uh, um, I believe it was in the Penn State Oklahoma game, which was for the national championship. But maybe it, it wasn't that game. It was a, he was a freshman. Um, and I think he was playing safety or cornerback, but, but uh, it was a big, big, big football game. And all of a sudden, there goes my buddy as a freshman running out onto the field. And um, 
they threw the ball to the receiver that he was covering that receiver caught a touchdown and this kid never got over it uh and the next year he wasn't on the team um i did have the privilege of playing intramural flag football with him he was a quarterback and we we went really far and did really well um but Athletes can have traumatic elements in their careers where you get something stuck in your head and like, I can't do it. Or, you know, big rivalries between different athletes and I can't beat yeah. this guy. Um, sure. Um, so sure. perhaps cannabis can have some effect that way. Uh, but I love that you said that, Jake. I think about at the practice level, you compete so much and it creates some type of anxiety for the next day. And I think that cannabis can come in at a perfect time to kind of relax that anxiety. Um, I know you, everybody preps for um, Sunday when NFL, Sunday nights, Sunday nights, Sunday nights. You have so much anxiety Friday and Saturday. It's tough to eat a little bit. I'm going to be honest. And that's where that cannabis can come in too there. I see it so many beneficial ways. If as long as you utilize it and talk around it and just educate people around it. Yeah. And, and I was a walk on. And let me tell you, there's some anxiety. Walking on a team has got some anxiety, too. Sure. So so uh, um, in all areas, um, let's talk about athletics. Unless you have a, an area that you want to go, I was going to mention uh, post-workout recovery and topicals. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of experience with topicals. Um, was it your, was it shoulder or knee for you? Rem remind me of how you, what you, how did you use topicals as a recovery piece? It started off by shoulders, but being safety, but the best spot for me was my knees and it felt amazing. And sometimes I just do it before I go for a walk. I just drop them on my knees. As so. a, as a, clinician seeing patients with medical cannabis there was a stretch there uh back when i was practicing in, in woodenville washington where i got some mma fighters coming in and i seemed to get uh, bunches of them coming in one after another and um a lot of them used topical cannabis and a lot of them would do um, small amounts before sparring. And several of the folks said that they could tell if on that given day, their partner slash opponent had been utilizing cannabis or not, because they were just not as um, supple, uh, which is kind of counter counterintuitive because uh, um what we do know about THC studies is we do know that they can slow uh, muscle twitch fibers. So they can slow you down a little bit. But sure. I think that one thing that, and I'm not recommending this, and it was probably not even a good territory to go in, but, uh, but I think it's important, um, is that perceptive, and maybe all psychedelics have this property, but perceptions of events before they happen are a critical part of athletics. If you can notice a particular player doing something earlier than you otherwise would have, it helps with reaction time. Okay. And, um, you know, I don't really, uh, I'm a doctor. A lot of doctors don't talk about their cannabis use. I have been a long-term medical patient for years, mostly for topical purposes. Okay. Um, but uh, people ask me uh, as a surfer, and I'm still, I'm not a good surfer, but uh, I still surf. I was just in the water yesterday, heading out again this weekend. Um, do, do I see cannabis as an, a performance enhancer for surfing? And I think that on the bigger, as I approach my limit, which is not great by any stretch, I think it's absolutely not. Um, but on smaller, more comfortable days, at least I, I don't have any data for this, but I do get a sense that I can read the ocean better. Um, oh, nice. So, okay. so perhaps reading an offense or a defense better. Uh, you know, we might get some really negative comments because we're, we're encouraging players to do this, but I'm just talking about this, this psychological aspect of cannabinoids sure. versus the physical. They called you, I don't want to mis misnomify you, but they called you topical Taurus. Is that topical what they Taurus. called you? Topical Taurus, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so 
maybe you know this. This is something I don't know, but I know has it was it the either NBA or NFL or both that have changed their drug testing policies for athletes. Believe it or not, Jake, I believe NFL. And that's all I know. I know it's going to kind of trickle down into other things as well. But okay. I know for a fact NFL, and that's all. Okay. I know. Okay. Okay. And uh, there's huge problems with big stars uh, talking about cannabis, uh, et cetera. With NFL, yeah. not so much NBA, uh, concussion aspects of, uh, of um, is a big deal. It's a big deal. Sure. Uh, for player safety and it's a big deal for team health because um with the concussion rules uh players can go down and be actually pulled out of important games um uh cannabinoids do have very good protective properties uh for post-concussive syndrome um so so that's another huge advantage um but we've been talking a lot about how cannabis might work why don't we talk about how cannabis uh, doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a very touchy topic because it's, it's, it's all like individualized, you know? Um, and I, I say that to say, uh, you know, I heard you mention one time on one of your talks that the dose is the poison. And I'm like, that's that was, the, that was, I, I copied that from a guy named Hippocrates, a Greek guy, the father of modern medicine. But it's very true. It's very true, but our dose is so much different, Jake. Your dose may be different than mine when, I, when we both go surfing, right? Um, so it's just so tough to talk about. And that's where the cannabis not so good aspect come in. We don't understand yourself and understand your education. And I like to say, um, when you, the more you know about yourself, the more you can place yourself. And, and that's huge in the cannabis industry, I think personally. And, and um we mentioned the trauma piece earlier because cannabis is so flipping good for dealing with trauma. We live in a trauma culture where we're accumulating traumas. A lot of us, especially depending on your situation, everybody's got a different situation and cannabis can be so good for trauma that I wonder if we can escape into it. And at a certain point it goes from being therapeutic helping us deal with the situation to stopping us from dealing with other situations. Exactly. And that's where don't let it smoke. You comes in perfectly, you know? Um, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, you talked with a number of experts, uh, pro cannabis, which obviously I fit into that category. Sure. Some folks on the fence, which I think moderation is important. I'm certainly, I don't, <laughs> I, I'm far well. I know enough that that even experts have huge swaths of of this cannabis world that they don't understand, and folks who are anti, or at least one the one um, uh, anti cannabis person. What were some of the anti cannabis comments that you would care to highlight or discuss? Uh, yeah, um, I think the 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 demographic of of people that I spoke to had a lot to do with this. Um, but I, I would say a lot of it was uh, a lot of it was packaging. How will kids tell the difference between you know sour gummies and then cannabis sour gummies? I know you have a little cannabis logo and the do not, but you know we don't always pay attention to that. Let's be honest. So a lot of it was that. A lot of it was um, was uh, understanding what's actually in the cannabis product itself. Is it really what's in it? Like, is, is it really myrcene or is it pinene? We don't know, right? Um, Laboratories so, will sometimes skew because, yeah. For sure. And, and last thing, um, and I kind of got offended by this and we kind of had to map this out. I don't like when people call the underground market the black market. Oh. So we call it the gray market, right? It's like, okay, the gray market. But what I was told and what I understood was a lot of the people who are in the gray market are now coming above ground now. And you don't always have the same values and the same um, give a shit meter like you should have when dealing with certain these products, you know? So really the, the, the holistic behind it, the, the value behind it and just doing it really for the people is where the kind of craziness comes in. And that's what really they spoke around for sure. You know, there, are, there is, I was just reading a big marketing survey on millennials, um, 
because they're such large cannabis consumers, but I was surprised across the board, across the board, (laughs) across the board, one of the major, uh, one of the major things that people use to focus on cannabis is looking at the, looking at those laboratory values, believe it or not. And as a result, there can be financial pressure on cannabis mm-hmm. companies to artificially elevate that or really? work with labs that are, uh, so, so I think that that is a downside that the industry needs to deal with. Um, one thing, and, and again, uh, just a caveat, I, I'm, for me personally, and we can talk about my personal journey, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an open enough book uh, to do that. Um, I don't feel uh, I don't feel that uh, high THC cannabis is good for me. I don't get me wrong. I really like the sensation of it, but I think <laughs> that that's part of the problem. Okay. I am really uh, I really like the CBD oriented products, right. um, and uh, uh, so so I utilize um, CBD. Uh, orally for anti-anxiety purposes and for sleep purposes it doesn't do anything for my pain believe it or not nor does the uh an inhalation only really works for me uh for quote recreational use or i would i would say spiritual use um but i think that as as young people i mean who, who am i to give advice uh to young folks other than i think that that what you said is accurate and you have to be the one who asks yourself this question is this something that is enhancing my life is this something that is detrimental to my life and it could be the answer is both sure. and part of the solution might be the ability to choose products that might fit a better category absolutely Absolutely. And you might have to do a little testing before you actually find those products. You know, I, I actually had a few questions for you. You mentioned, you know, you're, you're okay with sharing your, your use. If it's okay talking about a little bit around that. With, with certain areas, uh, I would say, uh, but I'm an open book as far as that goes. Absolutely. For, for sure. Well, let's start off with the topicals, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, know yeah. More about topicals. I would like to know more about how you use topicals? Is it more as a? Is it more of an everyday thing? Is it more of a like right before I go to sleep, like a routine or ritual type of thing, or I, just when you feel aches? Okay, honest, honest truth here. I wish it was every day, <laughs> but I, I, can, I guess I'm allowed to swear it's my own podcast. I can't afford that shit every day. <laughs> so, so, um, yes, I think that because I'm an old dude who still uses his body most days. And and that changes as as any young person who has the luxury of growing older finds that the body doesn't respond as well. So so I I would um, because it is still very pricey. um, I typically use it just about after every surf session or if I doing if I'm doing any kind of uh, intense physical activity. And in a perfect world, I would use it before I did any activity, uh, because I think that that not only can enhance um, uh, performance because the muscles don't get as sore, uh, um, I think it also may have some injury preventative aspects to it. Um, I first learned about way before I went to medical school. I, first, I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and a buddy of mine uh, from Las Vegas, uh, New Mexico, not Nevada, um, was, his, he is what the local people call a curandero. Uh, curandero comes from the u- root word of cure, uh, local healer. And his family had a 400-year history of passing down from grandmother to son he learned a lot of his healing techniques from his his lineage. He was the first guy, and this would have been in, uh, boy, when was I in New Mexico? 96, 97-ish, long time ago, um, was telling me how um, a lot of the, a, a lot of the local people would be using a tincture of multiple herbs one of which included cannabis for sore muscles, but it was in an alcohol tincture. And so it wasn't a lotion or anything, but that they would apply it to the area 
And that stuck with me for a long, long time um, because I went through a, a process and it wasn't until, oh, about 15 or so years ago that I really started to key into cannabis as a medicine. And then I remembered that story, got myself interested in, in, in Washington state early before uh, uh, you know, adult recreational legalization, we had a medical legalization. And the, um, the model was a co-op model so that you could band together with other people. And one person might be a good grower, another person might be good at making uh, you know, brownies, which is what we did at the time, et cetera. And uh, um, uh, so I, I started talking at little co-ops around and giving them my opinion. Nice. Um, and that's when I discovered topicals. And I think somebody gave me a, I was a patient, so I could participate legally, uh, but, but uh, somebody gave me some topicals early on, uh, which really, really, really helped uh, because uh, um, that's what I use cannabis medically for, for the most, is just when I get banged up and uh, I'm sore. And it, it really makes a, a quick difference for as far as that goes. I'm glad you mentioned that. I actually have a question. And this is, I'm gonna illustrate this question for you, okay? So, and, and, and hopefully you can speak to this because I think we, I think especially young adults, this makes sense. So if I put lotion on my hands, it stays on the surface of my hands. If I put CBD on my hands, it extracts, it pulls down into the muscles and the bones. What is that that's pulling down? What is that? There's a, there, there's a, a, a technical term called osmosis. Uh, and diffusion. You can Google those. But basically, uh, things will move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And you're absolutely right. The skin is a barrier. So some things will cross through the skin and some things don't. Sure. Um, uh, and um, so when we've been in the water a long time, our, our, the outside of our skin absorbs water, but the inside doesn't. So we get those little wrinkles in our skin. Uh, what crosses the skin barrier tends to be things that are can be dissolved in lipids, also known as fats or alcohol. Okay. Uh, but, uh, uh, but water tends to not cross the skin. So lotions will have a water component to them. They'll have a, a fat or a lipid component to them. And CBD crosses the skin actually very easily. THC, not so much. So CBD is very easy to get across the skin. And we know from animal studies that not only does it get across the skin, but it gets all the way into underlying muscle tissue, at least in animal studies. And um, we have the beginning of our pain reception starts out in the body those signals then go to the brain where it processes the pain response. Mm -hmm. So with a topical cannabis product, um, I use the analogy of a Bluetooth speaker that you run on your phone or your iPad. Where can you adjust that volume? Well, if my phone's on the other side of the room and the speaker's over here, I could just touch the buttons on the speaker. Or if the speaker's on the other side of the room and my phone's over here, I can adjust mm -hmm. the volume on my phone. Makes sense. So topicals are like adjusting the phone or adjusting the volume at the speaker. When we put them on locally, part of what's happening are anti-inflammatory aspects, but also part of what's happening is that it is changing the volume signal as it travels up to the brain. So it's actually working on multiple levels so that if somebody is getting relief medically from cannabis for pain, from, I don't like gummies because kids can eat them, but from something that they eat orally, tincture or whatever, um, they might likely also be able to get some additional relief from a topical. What's also cool about topicals is even uh, if you use a topical that has THC in it, that will not get you a head high. And there's a biologic reason for that. If you're interested, I can go in it. But, but as I said, THC crosses about one-tenth as easily as CBD. But what we do know from studies, at least in animals, is that it, it appears that a combination in a topical of THC 
plus CBD works better than either alone. Um, and also topicals are dose dependent. So when you are, if you're purchasing a topical, you want to look at the total milligram amount that is in it. Uh, because it's not about the size of the lotion, it's about the amount of cannabinoids that are in it. So you might actually get a value from buying a smaller bottle at a greater price than a bigger bottle at a, at a lower price. It depends on how concentrated it is. Just like, um, I don't like to use an alcohol example, but it's the only one. Just like some beer is 3.2% alcohol, some beer is 7% alcohol, they have a different concentration. Got you. And that's, that's very well said. You know, the cannabinoids, often you hear THC, CBD, later on down the line, something else will be coming up, CBG, CBN. There's just a really cool study. There's just a really cool study um, on minor, they're called minor cannabinoids, and they are having uh, effects. Um, and the authors of the study are saying that when we start, as we are, as scientists continue to uh, develop studies, we should be looking not only at the big uh, at the big cannabinoids, THC and CBD, but these other minor cannabinoids as well, because we now know that they are on their own having lots of effects. Uh, and again, this will be concentration dependent. And we are at the very beginning. Also, uh, there is there are other molecules called terpenes in cannabis, um, and there's some controversy on the in the higher echelons of the cannabis, uh, uh, you know, PhD MD level about well, terpenes don't really work if you ingest them, but certainly in topicals we have a lot of very good evidence that topical terpenes have medicinal effects. Um, uh, I hope. If anyone wants to have a discussion about this in the comment section, that would be great. Uh, I'd be happy to chime in. Um, but I think especially in terms of topicals, not only just the cannabinoids, which you mentioned, but also some of the terpenes and other types of chemicals in the cannabis plant. For sure. And falling on the topical moving forward, will it just be oils and ointments? Or do you think anything else that will be created? Well, that's a great question. I think the market is going to have to uh, determine that. One of my uh, one of my old girlfriends used to say, "I'm not going to use cannabis as a topical until it's like become a foo foo product that's just as smooth and nice as her expensive creams." Mm. We're not quite there yet on the formulation aspect. I think. I mean, my opinion, Taurus, on the medical side, which would correlate over to the sports and performance side, I like a, a Brazilian rainforest oil called Copa Iba oil. Um, I'll put that in as C-O-P-A-E-B-A -E oil uh, because it has a lot of a, of a, of a molecule called beta caryophylline in it that also enhances pain relief and has cannabinoid-like actions, but it is kind of a weird smell. Um, and I also like castor oil, uh, which most people think of as something that if you get constipated, you take castor oil, that clears everything out. But we're talking about it topically. And castor oil is a really not a, a great texture and it can stain clothing. So on a pure performance medical side, I can think of lots of, of products that really don't um, appeal to folks uh, because of the way they go on the skin, but that might be effective. Some people are not going to like those. Right. Um, other products uh, to reach a different audience or a different uh, consumer group, you're going to need to make them much more fragrantly pleasant. Um, I typically don't mention brand names. I'm thinking of one rose scented one that my mom uses that just has a beautiful smell to it and decent texture. Um, so, so different uh, groups are going to have different preferences, but to answer your question on a pure performance side for athletes, a lot of athletes aren't going to care about that. If it works better, then they're going to be uh, happy with that. And likewise for pain patients as well. Okay. That's great. That's great. I think I was speaking to my mom last week and uh, she's, she's, her sister's now starting to use topicals. What advice will you give to someone who just starting out, but don't want to go to any type of physician or doctor 
or anything like that, what advice would you give to the, the individual for them to figure out their dose and just how to kind of get into the game? For, for a topical or just in general? For, for a topical, for a topical. Uh, for a topical, I will use, I'll use, I'll use my mom as an example. Uh, you got to use it and you got to use a lot of it. And my mom, I know my mom, I, she, she will use it till it's down to about a half a bottle. And then she stops using it because it works so good. She doesn't want to run out. <laughs> so, so, so making sure that there's access and also the price is just have to come down. And I don't know how or when that's going to happen. Um, when, it, it's expensive. And, and so for people to use it liberally and freely, the prices have to come down. Sure. And I think that there's a, there's a chance uh, you've got your MBA. So you probably know more about these types of things that, than I do. Um, but uh, uh, you need to use a lot of concentrated product. Uh, the cannabis hemp plant is, it requires a lot of expertise and uh, scientific and artistic knowledge to grow consistent A plus top shelf cannabis. Without a doubt, that is a pro game. But for C plus cannabis, uh, that maybe doesn't really look that great, you can grow a lot of that very affordably. And I see those types of things being able to go into topical products, maybe help bring the prices down. Um, but there's a price point problem that we have. And, and, and um, I know because, you know, it can be very expensive. So um, also uh, surface areas, things that are closer to the surface. So for example, with knees, you mentioned you're very helpful for your knees. Um, th that medial meniscus on the inside of the knee, very close to the skin, that medial uh, collateral ligament, very close to the skin. Uh, knees can be uh, knees can be great. Also, if you're not worried about using too much of the product, uh, we do think that there are some. Um, interchanges between nerve conduction and the spinal cord that if you actually even though the, the pain might be on the inside of your knee if you put it the topical all around the entire joint that might have some better pain relieving properties than just on the particular area okay. um, i think even though it's very hard to treat uh, things that cause hand pain like osteo or rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. can be very good. Uh, bursitis on the elbow, also topicals. If you're going camping, uh, summertime and you don't like mosquito bites, bug bites, insect stings can be very helpful for that. Uh, for folks who get too much sun exposure uh, at the beach, you get some sunburn, it can help with the burning pain from sunburn. So, so these are some areas that folks might not think of using topicals where they actually might be a benefit for some people. I mean, I didn't even know that. And that's tons of value there. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. What is the bad thing about topical? Give me one bad thing. Anything they don't that... last very long. They don't, there's two hours, maybe four, six topical. tops and they're gone. So, so if you can't get to sleep because your knee pain is bugging you, uh, you put a topical on at 10 p.m., it's going to be back up at midnight, uh, getting you, making you have to roll over, et cetera. So they don't last very long. For sure. That's one of the big downsides. Um, uh, their expense obviously is another. And the fact that you have to use a lot to have an effect, um, certain product formulations can cause barriers. Um, alcohol applied to the skin can enhance penetration. Uh, so I think a lot of formulas don't penetrate as well as others. Uh, people mention nano products. I don't know if those work. Uh, I've seen a few studies that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen a couple studies that made me think, hmm. So if, if you're a manufacturer listening, doing your own in-home, uh, if you're a big company, you can design trials uh, to, to, to help us understand this better. Um, the main, the main side of, uh, is that's one of the main sides, but I think topicals is, is actually one of the best ways to introduce people to cannabis because you don't have to get a head high from a topical. 
for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, what, what if the kids say, hey, I don't want it to take that long, Jay? You know, the young generation, they say, I don't want it to take that long. I want something that's going to happen now. What will you tell them then? Other than vaping, other than smoking, what will you tell them then? Uh, <laughs> just wait a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find you know, who, gonna... who am I to tell? I know I know where my mind was when I was you know 14, 16, 18. Uh, yep. so so it's hard to it's hard to hear your your elders uh, sometimes. Absolutely. Um, but but don't give up on it. And and um, we were chatting about this in our last conversation. I I haven't met many athletes before the age of 27 or after, after the age of 27 or 28 that haven't had a major thing happen to them, whether it be injury or some other kind of health issue that they've had to overcome. Mm -hmm. So I think that young athletes, uh, especially for someone with who wants a long career, including Olympic or professional level where you can perform very well, certain, certain, if you, if you're, you maintain your body and well into the early to mid thirties now, and depending on the position quarterback, for example, mm -hmm. apparently forever, but, <laughs> but, but, um, uh, you are likely as an athlete and make comments in the section, uh, in the comment section, usually by the time, 27 28 or so most folks who want to continue will have some type of something that they have to overcome mm -hmm. so if you're young and studly and a superstar and you've never been injured great remember this after if, if you are lucky to have a long career uh maybe think about topicals then as as i mentioned I learned about topicals uh, from in New Mexico a long, long time before I actually put them to use uh, in my body. And, and they don't take that long. They're also mildly effective. They're not majorly effective. So if, you're, if your knee pain is at, a, is at a five out of 10 on the pain scale, 10 being the worst, maybe the topical can take it down to a three. Uh, but with a five out of 10, you're not going to be able to run and jump as well as at a three out of a 10. So, so mm -hmm. even that two point difference um, can be a factor. And also um, lots of other oral medications people take. Uh, people take a lot of ibuprofen. Uh, athletes will do a lot of ibuprofen yeah. post recovery. Uh, the top, the Though they can be wonderful anti-inflammatories and very effective, but they're hard on the stomach and they can be hard on the liver and kidneys. Yep. So to be able to reduce that is talking about life extension. I'm going to rewind it to, uh, I asked my sensei in Japan, I was studying martial arts and um, Yoshimura sensei, he, I, I asked him something along the lines of what can I do um, I, I asked him, I asked him, what can I, I felt like I was at a plateau, like I was working really hard and not getting better. And I said, I asked him, what can I do to improve myself? And he basically said, play the long game. And if you want to play the long game, study shiatsu, which is the Japanese acupressure. So I went to my, I went and I did, I studied acupressure, shiatsu for two years in Japan. Um, that sensei, Mishima sensei, Hey, Mishima Sensei, if you're listening, he's still he's still walking the planet. Yeah. Um, he said to me something that I didn't believe, but I was polite and I pretend I believed it. And he said that sports are bad for the body. And I was like, that can't be true. I didn't say it. That can't be true. How in the world are sports bad for the body? You look at any athlete, they have the best bodies in the world. How can sports be bad for the body? Well, you tell me, Taurus, you have a couple collisions. <laughs> How is that on the body? Yeah, it's tough, especially if you don't take care of it. You know, we we get told to kind of just keep going, keep fighting, you know, tough it out. And if you don't really take control and really like pause and just really, you know, take care of it, it hurt a little bit more not later on down the line for sure. And and um, what do you have to say for for the for the young ones coming up? Yeah, I would say um, you know, educate yourself is huge. Um, I would say also do what you like to do. Just don't let it control you. Um, and then last thing I would say is 
you know, keep listening to Jake like I did when I first started and keep learning a little bit more about the ECS and a little bit about where cannabis is going. And then you can figure out where you want to place yourself at moving forward, for sure. I, I always say, do your own thinking and learn what you know. Absolutely. Because one, once we do our own thinking, we might learn something, but we, we don't put it into practice. So learning what you know. Um, I What I've enjoyed about this uh, podcast, other than, the, uh, other than the topic, which obviously I love, is that you've asked me a lot of questions. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything I haven't discussed that you would want to share with folks uh, that I maybe might not have asked you, Taurus? Um. Probably what I'm trying to do with Don't Let It Smoke You. I started off as a book. Um, I do corner classes. Literally, I go to downtown Seattle. If I'm in Georgia, I go to Georgia and all for free. And I try to just give out the education that I do have right now that I'm still learning more and more each day. Um, so I'm doing corner classes. I'm looking to turn Don't Let It Smoke You into a movie one day, one day soon. Once cannabis is everywhere, like coffee shops, it'll be great if we turn it into a movie where kids can like not let it control them. I think that'd be helpful. And I'm just really, I went through it. I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor, but I went through it and I want to help someone else not go through it. So that's where I'm at. And, and that's, that's my goal. And that's what I want to do. Absolutely. That's really great. Um, how can people find you uh, <laughs> if they want to find out more about what you're doing? Yeah, for sure. So you can go to cleverchief.org to check out the book and actually what's coming up. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore T-I-S-T-E, LinkedIn, Taurus Batiste. Um, I'll follow back no matter what. And, uh, and even if you just want to have a great conversation, email me at don'tletitsmokeyou at gmail.com. And then we can dive a little bit more into cannabis and where it's going and talk a little bit more around that. It sounds like you have a, a mission uh and and would it be too presumptuous for me to say if uh, some young person reaches out to you online that they're going to be able to get a hold of you somehow and that you're going to be there for them i'll be there for them for sure for sure Great. that's what this is all about absolutely wonderful well with with uh, without further ado unless you have any further questions which i'd be happy to take uh we can conclude this i'd love to have another talk some mm -hmm. other time soon and also for you in the local area, because we're kind of close here, I'm, I'm dead, just down the road in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be happy to show up on a weekend when I've got time. Uh, if you wanted to collaborate or do something together, I really enjoyed our talk. Uh, I want to make sure I read it right from the Amazon uh, page. Um, oh, I've already lost it. What is the tagline of your book? Uh, it's, it's, it, it, there's the title and then there's the tagline. It's like, don't let it smoke you creating a non-toxic relationship with cannabis. That was it. The creating a non-toxic relation with cannabis. Listen, folks, because it's such a powerful, powerful tool, powerful tools can be sharp so they can cut the wrong way. So as, as we said, do your own thinking. This plant has a lot to offer the community. It has a lot to offer the philosophy it has a lot to offer the business world um but it does come uh because it is so powerful it does have a downside so just beware this is uh dr jake felice thank you so much for listening and uh taurus if you'd hang on after the recording we can have a little chat and uh tune in next time uh, again this is dr jake felice drjakefelice.com thank you so much thank you